Casey Martin from Wine Country Woodworks and this is going to be a really cool video on how I teach you all how to make color swirl resin casting, specifically pen blanks in this case with maximum color separation. Now the resin I'm using in this video is Alumalite Clear, but this technique can be applied to any other resin. The only thing that's going to be the main difference maker is waiting for the resin to heat up will take different amounts of time. So. One of the main things, in my opinion, that helps with color separation as well is to use opaque colors. It doesn't help with actually the colors not bleeding, but it allows you to have a brighter contrast between the colors. You can get really, really cool color separation and color swirl blanks or resin castings with pearlescent powder colors, but in my opinion, they're a little more brighter of a contrast if you use opaque. So. I just got done weighing out the resin, and here's an example of, for you guys of what the resin starts out around. 84 degrees in my case, uh, if you're perfectly at room temperature and the resin's perfectly at room temperature, it'll be around 72. When we want to start mixing, as you'll see later on, is around 100 to 105. You can even start as low as 95 degrees, but as long as you can get to a pressure chamber in time, if you're using a Lumilite, around that range is better. So as I was mentioning with opaque colors in this specific casting, if I'm remembering correctly, we are doing a light purple, a black, a red, and a light blue, all of which are going to be mixed with a little bit of white dye to cause them to become opaque. Since I'm using Alumilite Clear, if I don't add any white dye, it's not going to be opaque. It's going to still be transparent. The mold I'm using is a mold from P-Town Subby. I like this mold a lot because since I cut my blanks to three quarters of an inch, I can get seven blanks out of it. And it's really easy to demold, obviously, being silicone. It takes six, about 600 grams in total if you're filling it up to an inch, which is the height of it. But I do about 550, 540 since I don't need that full height. So right now I'm just adding in the white to all of them besides of course the black one and then getting the resin going. If you're really really concerned about time, like let's say I was doing two of these molds, I would have added all of the dyes and the white before I poured in the clear to each. The only downside about that is since I want an equal amount of resin in each cup, when I'm pouring them out I kind of just have to have it perfect the first time if I've already added the dyes into the bottom of the cup, right? I can't pour, you know, a light purple back into the blue if the blue is a little low because then I'm going to mix up the dyes. Whereas if I add the dyes after, I can make sure each is perfect. But you can also just weigh them out individually. Anyway, just a little side tangent worth mentioning. So now the kind of boring part of mixing them all up and then that other positive about taking a little bit longer if you're doing this, if you're familiar with Illumilite Clear and my videos, which is what I use, the working time, depending on the temperature in the shop, ranges from anywhere from 7 minutes to even 10 minutes sometimes if it's really, really cold. So since I'm pretty comfortable with the time, me taking my time mixing these all up, I'm okay with it because the resin is starting to get hotter, which helps with the color separation that I'll explain more in a moment because since the resin is getting hotter, it's starting to get closer to curing, which makes it more thick. It's not going to be as thin in terms of viscosity, and that's going to help a lot with the colors not blending when you mix them together. I'm sure most of you know what I mean by color separation, but what I'm talking about is if you're mixing a blue and a red together and trying to make a swirl of not mixing them together and getting purple. You want those swirls to stay red and blue. And temperature is the main thing. I have a link in the video description to the tools I use. It's a page on my website. And one of those tools has a, an Amazon link to the temperature gun that I use. It's one of the cheapest, uh, most practical, good ones in my opinion. And you can see it's super easy. You just tap it. And I'm getting 106, 107. So I'm checking both of them. They were all mixed originally from the same, so they should be identical, but want to double check, and that means it's ready to pour. Like the highest you ever want it to be before putting it under pressure to avoid getting bubbles is like 120. So even though I'm starting to pour it at 107, 
it's probably getting pretty, pretty close by the time I put it into the pressure pot. pot. So starting anywhere from around 100 degrees to 105 is kind of the max, right? Because another really, really important thing to mention is when you're pouring these colors, as I'm doing right now, you want to pour them slow. When you see the resin go down to the bottom, that's okay, especially at the beginning, because you want every single layer to be even in terms of colors. But as I get higher up, you'll see I'm I'm going to start kind of splattering it and pouring it even lighter right there. You can see I'm starting to do that with the red so that it stays up top. I'm not pushing everything on the bottom, and that's also going to help with color se separation because I'll do one final swirl with a stick at the very end, and that's going to get the swirl. If I'm pouring the resin kind of hard and fast and it's dipping down into the whole body of liquid, that's causing some mixing on its own just by the force of it going in there and we don't want that we want to start it all just getting it together as slow and as methodical as we can and then at the very end we'll use a stick to kind of mix it around that you'll see but so this of course takes more time right doing it this way so again make sure that on the temperature side of things you need to have your pressure pot super ready for this method in general but also you don't want to start doing this anywhere past 100 to 105 degrees unless you're planning on just pouring like two colors right in there right away and then mixing it if you're doing a bunch of colors that's not going to get you the best color separation so now we're getting to the very last bit of Resin, I think I ended up doing like 540 grams here, and I could tell just visually because I've used this mold so much. I was like, oh, I just need, you know, like a tenth of an inch more. So I was trying to get all the last little bits out of the, the cups. And then here I just use a barbecue skewer. You can use a popsicle stick or anything for that matter. I like the barbecue skewers because since they're so tiny and thin, I get really tight swirls. And here you can see even after it's cured, you can tell the swirls are tight which most of the times you can't tell until you cut into them, which I don't show on the table saw. I've showed it a lot in past videos. I thought it would be kind of boring, but here's an example of quite a few that I've made with this process. All of these are going to be up on my Etsy for purchase. If anyone's interested, the link will be down below. But I thought this was a really important process that people ask about a lot. Here are them cut up, and man, I'm just really, really stoked about how these come out when you do them correctly of course I make mistakes sometimes and it's not perfect but when it's done correctly I just love how it looks and trying out new colors like those up top wasn't sure how it would turn out and it's kind of fun to experiment to you know throwing some colors together you wouldn't think so if you guys like the video please throw it a like if you're new to the channel and want to subscribe hit that subscribe button let me know what you all think down in the comments below and I look forward to making a new video again soon thanks for watching